Okay? It turns out that every element, every single element has radioactive isotopes. All of them. Every single one. All right? uh, most elements also have stable isotopes. Okay? So a stable isotope would be a uh, isotope that's not going to break down, that will never undergo a nuclear reaction. Okay, so here's just a few examples. Um, you know, magnesium, magnesium 24, 12 protons, 12 electrons, or 12 protons, 12 neutrons, stable, not going to break down. But magnesium 23 and magnesium 27 are unstable, so they're eventually going to uh, undergo a nuclear reaction. Iodine 127, stable, good to go, never going to do anything. Iodine 125, 131 are radioactive. Uh, it turns out past bismuth, bismuth 83 on. All of the elements, or all of the isotopes of those elements are radioactive. So there's no stable isotopes past uh, bismuth. So uranium, all of its isotopes are unstable. All uh, will undergo nuclear uh, fission. And so uranium-235, uranium-238, all radioactive. Okay. So what are those talking points we want to reference? Okay. So all elements... have radioactive isotopes. Even hydrogen. Hydrogen 1, stable, cool. Hydrogen 2, nicknamed deuterium because it has two, uh, a proton and a neutron, stable, cool. Tritium, H3, hydrogen 3, one proton, two neutrons, unstable. Uh, will undergo radioactive fission. Okay. Hey, I can change my slides or pen again. All right. uh, elements past bismuth have no stable isotopes. Carbon. Carbon is another element that has, of course, some stable and radioactive isotopes. So most of your carbon in your body is carbon-12, but 99%, almost 99% of the carbon in your body is carbon-12. Six protons, six neutrons. Carbon-13, almost 1% of your body is carbon-13. Six protons, seven neutrons, stable. Carbon-14, a very small percentage of the carbon atoms in your body are carbon-14, and they are radioactive. So you have radioactive isotopes in your body right now. All past bismuth. 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 I went with the uh, abbreviation. Bismuth. Oh, that's that element? Yep, element 83. <laughs> 83, bismuth. Now that we know everybody has some radioactive isotopes, uh, one of the things that we're going to use quite a bit to talk about how uh, stable or unstable or how radioactive, like the, as a spectrum uh, element is, is to use its half-life, okay? So what was the half-life again? We talked about half-life in kinetics. What was the definition of half-life? Okay, so the half-life, when we use it for uh, radioactivity, which we abbreviate as T for time, sub one-half, so half-life, in kinetics, we just said it was the amount of time it takes for half of the reactant molecules to react. Uh, in nuclear chemistry, we can amend that just a little bit. It's still the same concept. We, we would say the amount of time it takes for half of the radioactive isotopes to decay. So when we uh, talk about those radioactive isotopes undergoing a fission reaction, breaking apart, we often call that decay. So uranium-235 undergoes some type of decay process. Radioactive isotopes have a wide range of half-lives, 
okay, or half-life times. The ones in this, you know, I don't know where I got this um, image. The ones in purple have half-lives less than a minute, sometimes like milliseconds, okay? Whereas, you know, radioactive isotopes like uranium, uranium and thoriums, uh, radioactive isotopes, all the right, not all the right, so many of the right isotopes have half-lives in the terms of millions of years and billions of years, and that's why they can be used to figure out how old dinosaurs are and things like that. And so there's a wide range of half-lives in the time, um, but what does that say about the stability? Okay. We can use the half-life to determine or to figure out how stable or, or not a isotope is. So do you think something is more stable with a long half-life? Or a short half-life? Yeah, longer the half-life. The longer the half-life is, the more stable it is. It's not going to break down. So if something stable for has a half-life of a million years, it's going to take a million years for half of those radioactive isotopes to decay. If something has half-life of 24 hours, in one day, half of them are gone. So they're reacting much more quickly because they're more unstable. Uh, they don't react with anything else. They just break down. Oh, okay. So if, they're just yeah, they break down, and we'll talk about what happens in those. Okay. So the longer the half life, the more stable something is. 